Wow, let's do some news. My name is Mike B. <laughs> that was a lot shakier than I anticipated. I gotta Boom, get used to that. Baby. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Let's do some news. My name is Mike B. Martha, thank you so much for that, by the way. Tier 2. Appreciate that. Uh, today's date is December 13th. <laughs> I know you guys told me, all right? All right? I'm sorry. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't do it. December, Friday the 13th, December 2019. It's the last Friday the 13th of the year. Uh, it's also the last 13th of the year. Uh, so... <laughs> Just last night, we had the Game Awards, uh, and we're not going to go through every single award uh, in, in detail, but we are going to go through and just kind of kind of peruse the, uh, or just kind of browse the, 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 the people that won, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about each one. <gasps> Boom! Also, a full moon, that's right! It is also a full moon. It's the last full moon of the year. There's so many lasts today! Holy shit! Um, this is the last time I'm gonna wear this shirt this year. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> Meteor shower tonight, too? Is it the last one of the year? No, I don't feel sleepy at all. Uh, so, so, game of the year. Probably most important one, right? Biggest one. Went to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, which is great. I've heard it was a good game. Um, moving on. <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually haven't played a lot of these games. Considering I feel like I've played a good significant amount of games this year, there's a lot of games actually I didn't play. It's like, how, how do you fucking keep up? Like, I mean, I didn't play Death Stranding, which won Best Game Direction, but it was mainly because the game looked boring. Um, and I felt like I could probably just do the synopsis and be like, oh, cool, that's really interesting, and not have to, you know, <laughs> actually play it. Uh, best narrative was Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium, which is the game that we played on stream, and my only complaint was that it was a lot of reading, and it made it difficult to play on stream because it was a lot of dialogue. Um, not necessarily uh, voiceover dialogue, but just a lot of dialogue. That was really the only complaint that I had about the game. Um, but it's taken away, like, four awards, I think, last night, actually. and there's. And there's actually uh, a number of other uh, uh, awards. I think Steam. I think actually Steam Awards also gave Disco Elysium some stuff. I, I would say probably the big, the, the biggest winner of this year has pretty much been Disco Elysium in terms of just pure quantity of awards won. Probably, no, probably. I'm just kind of making that up, but it sounds about right. Um, uh, last general election of the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> no politics. <laughs> None of that. You did it to yourself, just like we did. All right, best art direction goes to Control. Uh, best score music, Death Stranding. I have not heard a single song from this, but it beat out, it beat out Cadence of Hyrule, which was a little upsetting. Best audio design went to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I have a friend who played Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and um, he says that from a technical perspective, uh, graphically, it is like amazing um now i don't believe it won any like best graphics awards or anything here uh or anything noting the actual visuals or anything yet but um but apparently it went for best audio it's fantastic moving on <clears throat> best performance from mads mickelson as cliff in death stranding games for impact gris we played gris gris was uh, a, a very interesting mm, narrative game i guess i don't know uh, without giving anything away. It's, it's kind of a story-driven platformer. It's pretty good. Uh, Fortnite beat out Destiny, Final Fantasy XIV, Apex Legends, Legends, and Rainbow Six Siege for best ongoing game. Last year, I believe, Warframe won this. Um, but Warframe can't, you know, they can't go, can't go twice. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm sure that none of you guys are also, are surprised at all that, uh, Fortnite one. Warframe is a beta though. <laughs> it, it could double dip, right? I feel shooters shouldn't count for best ongoing unless they release actual different content or story. How about that WoW classic for ongoing? <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're a surprise. Yeah, you're a surprise. I think you, you, you pull my chain. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's Fortnite. So Fortnite is inarguably one of the biggest games of the decade, you know, aside from other notables like Minecraft and whatnot. Um, so I guess it has to win something sometime. Best independent game also went to Disco Elysium over Baba Is You, Katana Zero, Outer Wilds, and Untitled Goose Game. I really seriously thought that Untitled Goose Game was going to take this away because it was just, just became this fucking huge meme of a game. Everything. Everything is about that. Um... You really expect the Final Fantasy XIV? I would say, yeah, there's, 
there's definitely games here that I, I could easily like personally say they're better overall. I would say Apex Legends does not deserve it. Fortnite does not deserve it. Rainbow Six Siege, albeit a, a, a seemingly fantastic game, compared to, like everybody I talk to says it's a fantastic game, um, also does not deserve, deserve this. For the same reason that, that Freycore, you know, you said that it needs to release actual different content stories. So really, that would only leave us with Final Fantasy XIV and Destiny 2, both of them which have released, you know, major story, you know, expansions, uh, or, or actually, yeah, just major story expansions uh, and additions just in this past year. And so, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, this, this award is designed to, to reward games that just yeah, continually, continue, continue to grow and continue to add content and, you know, make their players happy but you know i guess i guess just having you know ray and a red stormtrooper skin uh is considered content and furthers the game's story or something i will say though that fortnite's relaunch event or whatever that they did where they blind a black hole and all that crazy stuff that was pretty fucking stellar that was pretty spectacular uh, it's a shame that there's no real story to kind of back that up and really kind of run with. But still, the event itself was pretty fucking awesome. If CG Fortnite were on there, CSGO should have been on there. For best ongoing, yes. Correct. Correct. Um, does Fortnite have a story? I actually don't know. Best independent game, Disco Elysium. Call of Duty Mobile. Best community support, Destiny 2. This one was kind of, it, this one was kind of weird. Uh, because I don't know how they really quantify this. I don't know how they qualify a game for... Uh, best community support is it just like the, the the ones that have the best like reddit presence or best social presence or or what uh might have been community voted it was part of the pre-show oh thank you thank you best email sent <laughs> activision's not on that list right now <laughs> jesus uh so destiny 2 won good destiny deserves something uh <laughs> Uh, it did, but they, they flushed the story mode for, oh, for the, for the BR. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, save the world, uh, the orcs must die, uh, style gameplay. Yep. Uh, best VR AR game is Facebook's Beat Saber, which also just released a Green Day pack after Green Day played last night, which, let me tell you, as a boomer, <laughs> as an, as an elder, 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 elder or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Whatever the fuck. As an old person who grew up with Green Day. I love Green Day. I will go back and I will listen to just any random Green Day album. Not like the first like four, right? Uh it was really weird. I didn't quite understand why they were playing at at the Game Awards show. The Game Awards show is supposed to be a way to advance the games industry, right? It's to reflect on the year and then look forward to what's coming next. That's the whole point of an award show, right? I felt like Green Day would be better suited for BlizzCon, but not not for a show that's supposed to be like championing games that are that are held high by 14-year-olds like Fortnite. It just it just seems like a really weird booking for some reason. Um and when he was flicking off the camera, I thought, ha, ha, it was, see? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Second time I played, I didn't even sound like Green Day. Yeah. Uh, Game Awards just should have had people like Maluka playing. The point of the, the, point of the show was commercials. Every rewards, every awards show is pretty much going to be decked out with ads or commercials or whatever. Um, in, this, in this industry, for sure. Uh, and, and, and a few others as well. But... Um, I mean, even, even, well, you think of like a music awards, right? Music awards always has like, you know, people, uh, you know, performers and whatnot, and they're there to promote their own shit, of course. Um, they had Muppets there, which I doubt many kids now, uh, know of nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's tough. It's tough because it's like, oh yeah, this is something that's, this is cool, but I don't feel, I don't feel like for the advancement of, uh, basically to keep games cool for like younger kids, I don't really feel like Green Day and Beaker are going to be the ones to do it. Um, that's on the Nick Cannon Eminem situation. <laughs> I wrote you, but you didn't write back. Oh man, <laughs> Nick Cannon, Jesus Christ! Uh, best action game was Devil May Cry Five, winning over uh, over uh, uh, Metro Exodus, Gears Five, Call of Duty, Astro Chain, Apex Legends. Cool. Uh, best RPG, Disco Elysium again. They keep on winning. They beat out Outer Worlds. 
which, uh, let me tell you this. I loved Outer Worlds. I absolutely love Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds is easily one of, one of my favorite games this year. But I didn't think it was, I don't think it deserves to, get to beat out uh, 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 Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV should have definitely taken home Best RPG. That's it. I didn't, I didn't even fucking play, I didn't play Final Fantasy XIV once this year. Which is everything that I've read, and all of you guys who have played it, who I've known some of you guys now for like, you know, fucking five to ten years in terms of like maybe just your 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 username uh i know what games you guys talk about and how you guys talk about those games uh and let me tell you final fantasy 14 definitely seems like this should have been the game that win too many things and did not lots of nominees though oscar nominated so and so <laughs> grammy nominated so and so at least they have that although no one's gonna say the game awards nominated game <laughs> no they're not gonna say that uh uh <laughs> Not sure if Monster Hunter could be classified as an RPG. <clears throat> I think technically, very technically, best fighting game goes to Smash. That is actually not a surprise at all, I think. Final Fantasy 14 gets shafted because it's not entirely westernized like a lot of other games and requires larger time investment. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 14, unfortunately, I think was not included in anything other than ongoing games because its tech didn't launch this year. Oh, man. I don't think uh, MMOs do well with the judge jury pool. Yeah, no, I think you guys are all bringing up very good points. You guys are all bringing up very good points. Um, I mean, let's let's go back. Let's just take a look at that real quick again. Best RPG goes to Disco Elysium, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Kingdom Hearts three. I mean, I'm surprised Kingdom Hearts three. I mean, it's, fuck, I felt like everybody was on oh, that game's nuts. Um, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Just as long as it made bank. Oh, yeah. The Outer Worlds definitely made bank. We got, we got a pretty... Uh, was it underwhelming? Was it underwhelming overall, Monster Cloud? Damn. Physical Elysium did deserve to win something such a unique game. Not only did it win something, Zebrios. <laughs> it won fucking everything. It won so many things. Uh, best family game goes to Luigi's Mansion. This was basically the Nintendo category. If you take a look here, we have... Uh, Ring Fit Adventure on the Nintendo. Super Mario Maker 2, obviously on the Nintendo. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Nintendo. Yoshi's Crafted World. Nintendo. Uh, so in the Nintendo category, the best Nintendo game is Luigi's Mansion 3. So, yay. Uh, it's a solo game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a game that anybody in the family... Like I said, it's, it's, a Nintendo, it's a Nintendo category, right? They, they needed another game to throw in there. Uh, uh, let's see. I mean, Nintendo is the family game company. Yep. I like... <laughs> <laughs> I like Nintendo's chances. I didn't, so I, I only caught the tail end of the, uh, probably the last 40 minutes or so. Basically, when, when Reggie came out, that's when I started watching. Uh, like, I turned it on. Uh, uh, I turned it on. Yeah, I went and walked on it. I came back real quick and I ran upstairs. I disappeared upstairs. I popped it open and I just see Reggie walk out with sunglasses on. And I was like, oh man, I'm so mad that I missed so much of this thing. Um, the Q, Q World didn't get any, any, any nominations. What? Best strategy game goes to Fire Emblem Three Houses. Not Total War, not Anno, not Age of Wonders, not War Group, not Tropico. Um, I actually didn't play any of those games. I have played, I have actually played a few strategy games this year. And none of them made the list. Well, fuck you. Uh, best sports racing games goes to Crash Team Racing. What? Really? I have not heard hardly anything good about that game uh, from, from, from folks here. Um, dude, Krell, because he's an icon. <laughs> Please separate sports and racing. Yeah, man, I, I I am surprised. I am surprised, but you know, I guess what was it last year? Last year, uh, I want to say that Rocket League won, or maybe it was the year before that they won. Because I remember we had this conversation before Kimmy, uh, where we were talking about how sports and racing is probably split up, but then you know, Rocket League is kind of sports and racing, so. Um, just the microtransactions are garbage. Oh, that's what it is. See? But that's part of the fucking game, and that should be taken into consideration when they're getting up for, uh, uh, for, for awards. Now, I can't really speak to, you know, FIFA, F1, or Dirt Rally 2, because I didn't play Dirt Rally 2. I love Dirt Rally 1. I heard Dirt Rally 2 was pretty good. Um, but I'm just really surprised to see a Carter make the number one position there. Just, uh, less than stellar. Yeah, Sonic. Oh, man. I wanted to like that game so bad, 
But ultimately, I do think that Sonic, uh, uh, Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed is still the best Sonic racing game. It's actually one of the best Carters, period. It is such a good, such a good mix and collection of, of characters and everything. Oh my god. Donut! Shush! All right. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go kick him in his no nuts. Best. Oh my god. Best multiplayer game. I think someone came to the door. Yep. It's okay. Come here, donut. Come here. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here, donut. Come on. Come on. It's someone came to the door. That's why. Um. No, he's gonna bark. He's gonna bark all the way up here. Oh my god. Anyways, let's try to move on if we can. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now he's done. <laughs> Best multiplayer game goes to Apex Legends, not Tetris 99, Call of Duty, Borderlands, or The Division 2. I would I would agree with that. Uh, I don't know how people feel about Tetris 99. Yeah, I heard it's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> you guys say it's a lot of fun. Uh, but Apex Legends, man, Apex Legends was, was, uh, was somehow a breath of fresh air, e even though ultimately it's kind of ended up being, you know, just another Battle Royale. Uh, it still was good and it was a lot of fun for a good period i think the biggest problem that they had was uh i think it's universally accepted that they just didn't put out content fast enough like they didn't have a good turnaround on content like fortnite continued putting out like new shit all the time uh and also the first season rewards were lackluster um and that was kind of the biggest things the biggest that, that was like my biggest issue with the game and i think that a lot of people thought roughly the same thing uh aside from perhaps other issues too uh, still the best feeling BR. Yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm gonna have to play a battle royale, I would play. That's what I would play for sure. Uh, best action adventure game goes to Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. Fresh indie game presented by Subway. Disco Elysium beat out a ton of games, uh, including uh, well, uh, Untitled, uh, yeah, Untitled Goose Game. I'm really surprised about that. Uh, uh, kind of the creator of the year goes to Shroud. We didn't have uh, uh, Dr. Disrespect on here, huh? Um, <laughs> does somebody own the word fresh officially? Well, it is, it, it is a, it, it is, when, it, when they announced it, it said like the, the fresh indie game of the year brought to you by Subway because, yeah, that's their thing. Traitor of the, <laughs> how does Shroud win that? You know, I don't know what the qualifications are for winning creator of the year. Except maybe that you didn't win it last year. Um, so Ninja's not on this list. I don't know exactly how they qualify that. I don't know. There's a lot of content creators across so many platforms. So many platforms. In the game, in the game space. You know, Mixer, Twitch, I guess Facebook, Caffeine, uh, YouTube. <laughs> there's, there's so many uh then i yeah I'm, i i don't know how they how they figure out who's going to be the best i mean i would say if we're going to drop all these dudes in a battle royale yeah sure you know what he's going to be the best <laughs> but but otherwise i don't really know i don't know how they quantify this uh popularity contest maybe i don't know uh i should have won i should have won i wasn't even nominated these things are a joke get out of my face Best esports game. Person that got the biggest contract. Oh, there you go. I don't understand how they could be up there, but the offline TV folks aren't. They put out way more quality content. It's, I think it's also just a matter of like how many eyeballs get on it. You know, like you know, who, who, where, what are people talking about? Like across the board. I mean, and Shroud. Shroud is just. I, I would say Shroud is deserving of it. I don't know the other candidates, right, that are up there. But if I were to compare them to the ones I do know, right, I would say that Shroud is probably universally the most liked popular creator uh if you look at you know usually when somebody gets to a certain level of fame they become hated right they become you know their life gets picked apart everything they say gets gets torn to shreds and they can't do anything right uh has not happened to shroud and i think for good reason i, I think what the fuck are you gonna say about shroud He's he's an easygoing guy. He kind of rolls with it, and he's just really fucking good at whatever he plays. Uh, so yeah, you know what? I don't know everybody else. I don't know Ewok. Uh, I, I know Lupo, uh, Courage, or Gref G. Um, but yeah, I would say that Shroud is definitely Mister Nice Guy. What did they say about it was Scout Team? 
That does say something about Microsoft Scout Team. All my TVs, but, but, but. We'll talk a little bit more about Microsoft's uh, uh, choices and uh, partners here in a minute. Best, what is this? Esports game, League of Legends. Starcraft's not even noted. Uh, best esports player goes to Booga. No, no Starcraft people. But we did get a, uh, um, we could get Faker on there. Ah, oh, Faker. God, it's always so close. Always so close. Uh, best esports team goes to G2 Esports over everybody else. Best esports event goes to League of Legends. Uh, best esports coach goes to Zonic for CSGO. And the best esports host goes to Sega Sjoks. I actually don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, she's a German uh, uh, caster, I believe. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Sebrios. <laughs> Sounds like shucks. Thank you. <laughs> like, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Just write the name out. It doesn't help me any. Uh, so, yes. That is the video game awards. Uh, overall, overall, I think, I feel like from what I, what I caught at the awards ceremony, and I also had a Twitter feed up with all the videos for all the announcements and everything, uh, and I was kind of flipping through them. Uh, it looked to me that this was actually the, I mean, the best Game Awards show in terms of, like, lack of really cringy or weird decisions, you know? Like, we didn't have, like, a Mountain Dew and Doritos moment, you know? Sure, the, the fresh indie game of the year from Subway, but that that's nothing, right? I, I, I feel like we're we're starting to kind of hit a groove in terms of, like, Making something that can represent games that doesn't feel like a <clears throat> an end to end just cringe fest. So, so I'm glad. I'm glad. Sure, there was some fake clapping through uh, through some of the, uh, uh, the the ceremony there. I don't know. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see the fake ca clapping? See fake clapping. Okay, wow. Fake clapping. When you know your fingers are just like a little off. Uh, <laughs> and you start typing like really weird shit. Uh, let's see Fortnite. Yeah, here you go. So Fortnite won an award and way fewer people in the crowd were clapping than what you can, uh, than what you hear. And so uh, there's a little commentary here from the, uh, the guys who are, who are co-streaming this. But I will say, though, that I did not go back to check other awards that were given out to see if the same thing had happened. It just so happened that uh that fortnite was the one that was called out on this well not, not them called out because they won an award but you know yeah. that is amazing. Oh so if you look here like that nobody's clapping amazing. right like this right in the front but in the back they have to win something from? there's nobody clapping if you're clapping holy clapping. shit max is right what? <laughs> Yeah, it's like there really is like nobody clapping and then the rest is just them talking or whatever, but it's it is pretty impressive that that you know <laughs> That it had to happen on Fortnite. <laughs> it had to happen on Fortnite uh, What do you say his hair looking like it was put through a helmet and then got gel applied, you know Let me tell you as somebody with with uh, with pretty high peaks. Uh, I I, I, I it feel it man. I feel it. it. I, I really do thankfully Thankfully, my hair isn't quite as thin on, on top, uh, but yeah, man, if it ever gets to the point, yeah, I might have to do that. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I saw one guy clapping on the edge. Oh, shit. <laughs> just like just doing that super fast clap, making up for everybody. At some, uh, at some point, people just need to accept it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do have, look at it. It's, it's, I mean, it's not like fall. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about my hairline, but, but I see him. I see it. I see it. And I understand. I understand. The peaks is going on forever. When I wear the VR headset and shit, I hate that my peaks like pop out. It look like it looks like white Batman ears, you know, like white like <laughs> sticking out the top of the headset. Oh man, yeah. Well, high peaks, man. Shit happens. Uh, it reaches the uh, equator at ear level. It's time to shave it bald. Woo, man. It's okay. I got you, Monster Club. Why, why go through this slow, embarrassing game of hiding the weakness and not just go full globe and shine it up? You know, I, I, I. I I thought about like what what hap what would happen if I like started losing my hair? Would I go bald? And one time I was uh, shaving, and I had to do this because you guys will probably assume I'm shaving my nuts or something like that. Um, one time I was shaving and I accidentally with with the actual with the electric razor, and it caught right here, 
And I don't know if some of you, oh, right here on this side, uh, some of you guys may not have remembered or maybe noticed because the camera, the way it was facing, maybe didn't see it or something. But who the fuck would have assumed that first era? Uh, and yeah, so it, uh, uh, it left like a bald spot. I had a patch right here that was basically just nothing. And, and, and I was just thinking like, oh shit, like that's, like if I shave my head, it might never grow back. And it took forever. It took forever. I said nothing. See, everybody knows. Uh, it took forever. I seriously thought that that was it. Like, I thought, wow, I just, it didn't even like nick. It wasn't even like a nick. It was just like I was shaving and I just shaved a little too close. And that was it. Fucking weird. And thus the Chin Hawk was born. <laughs> this actually happened like well after the Chin Hawk. It was like this year, as a matter of fact. I seriously thought that I would never get uh, get, my, get my hair back. Uh, so there were some announcements that were made. Uh, the PS4, the first game for the PS4, P PS5 was announced. Uh, we won't go through, uh, um, well, the game is called God Falls, developed by Gearbox. <laughs> Um, and uh, I should know the publishers, but in partnership with Counterplay Games. Thank you so much. Um, anyways, all of this is just pre-rendered stuff. No actual gameplay, so we don't really know the power or the potential of the PS5. But we do know is at the end, it basically goes and this is like, yeah, play, it's holiday 2020, and then PlayStation 5. And everyone's like, ooh, and that's pretty much all you got. So we don't have any details or anything on the PS5. <clears throat> None that are already, like, not already out there. Um, doesn't Gearbox always do launches for consoles, like literally all of them? I don't know. I mean, maybe, I mean, not, not just by virtue of them just, you know, I, I guess, yeah, they swing deals, I guess, sure, maybe, I don't know, wow. Hmm. You once cut the, the, the corner of your mouth, Joker-like, took two weeks, oh, two weeks, okay, that's not too bad. Okay, but, sh oh, shaving, yeah, ooh. We still have not seen Final Design of the PS5. You're right, we have not. But what we have seen is the new Xbox Series X. I think that's what it's called. Okay, so this is not it. But it looks just like this. <laughs> Linksys has been has been has been hinting to us that uh, this design is coming with their mesh system. So though no, they do have a uh, a pretty fantastic and crazy announcement here where they go through, they have the voiceover and everything. Hold on. <laughs> I know I got these scores. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. It's, it's, it, it sounds a lot like, um, it, here. Just think, I. Uh, and then you would get Apple's more 1984 ad. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. All right, that's all you need. Um, <clears throat> so here's what we know is that it looks like this. This is what we know. It looks like this. Oh, sorry, we know a lot more than this. This is what we found out during the reveal. And then GameSpot actually got an ins it's like a pretty insane uh, first look at Xbox, uh, Xbox One, no, Xbox Series X, motherfucker. <laughs> so let's go ahead and actually just loop this video here while we talk about it. Um, yeah, I want the Xbox X thing, I know, I know, I know, Xbox Sex, exactly. That's how, if, if so if you, if, if you're like using dictation to like write everything, like I do, I use dictation to write everything, uh, it will say Xbox Sex when you try to say Xbox Series X. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, was it Wendy's is on top of this today? What is this? Let me take a look at it here. Oh man, fucking Wendy's. Get it? God damn. <laughs> uh, so here's what we know. Here's what we know. The Xbox Series X uh, is going to have roughly the same controller. And I say roughly because they said that the Xbox One X, this controller, uh, is, I guess you could say they have coverage, right? Which basically means like how much, how many people's hands it'll fit by percentage. And they said 95% coverage. Um, they trimmed a little bit off the size and a little, they smoothed out the backside. So I guess right back here, this part right here has been smoothed out a little bit. Uh, and they say that these tiny little changes that they've done to the controller 
uh, have now increased the, I guess, the compatibility with people's hands from 95% to 98%. But the good news is this controller is going to be compatible with the Xbox Series X. Uh, and also the new Xbox Series X controller will be compatible with the Xbox One. So a lot of like back and forth if you need to. I uh, should just use Xbox One controller. Yeah, just use, yeah. Or, 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 you, or use this. Or just whatever. Yeah. Regular, re regular controller with a little Minecraft piggy. Uh, let's see. Also, they have a share button, which is going to be like dead center, I think, like right in the middle toward the bottom, uh, which I thought was funny uh, because I remember when the PS4 was announced and they had a share button and we made fun of it. We were like, oh my God, no one wants to do that. Like we were seriously talking some shit about the uh about about the share button uh, i i, I want to say maybe on like twemo or something like we were talking shit about it because it was new that was a new thing it was like oh god they want to link to your social we're gonna be spamming or social or spamming our friends or spamming our friends or whatever uh like we we were seriously just like not into it um but since then it's become part of everything the switch has it uh nobody yeah nobody uses the ps4 share button for sure but the switch has it and I would say that people use that pretty often, you know, maybe not like all the time, but fairly often. Uh, I know I've used it a few times about the new D pad because I love the Xbox one D pad. Yeah. The, the new D pad is a, uh, it looks like the pro one, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's actually, instead of just being a plus, it actually has a little bit of a circle around it too. I don't really mind either way. Uh, the, the D pads on, uh, on all Xbox controllers have always just been kind of okay. I think this guy work. Yeah. It works like the pro. Yeah, there it is. Um, Toby's the share button was when I accidentally hit it. Yeah, the share thing uh, I think is more appropriate now that social media is more widespread. Absolutely, yeah. So we yeah we used to talk shit about it a lot, but uh, definitely now more than ever, it, it's it makes sense. Uh, the Xbox. Oh, this is actually pretty. This is actually pretty awesome. The uh, the uh, Xbox Series X will allow instant resuming of games, which is not new, but. It will allow you to instantly resume more than one game, which is new uh, to consoles. Obviously, on your phone, you can just pick it up and just 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 go right. Or just open something up and go, which is I think which which actually I believe sets a standard for consoles going going forward. Uh, so it has save states. Uh, I mean, a save state would is kind of vague because it indicates that you know you can save the current state and then reload it later but that's different from an instant resume being able to instantly resume a game uh is i feel like a little i mean it's still technically i think it's a save state right but it's still like when i say save state it's like you still have to load the game and all that but uh be able to instantly resume something feels a little bit much more like a phone would do uh the switch has instant resume but only for one game exactly yep Guess you don't own a Steam controller. Oh, you're talking to somebody else. Uh, no controller could be worse than the Twitch, the Switch's tiny Joy-Con thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> the tiny Joy Cons are really a huge pay of the ass. And shh, gamer, talking that shit. But you're right though, the Steam controller really is the worst controller for gaming in general. But it also happens to be the best controller for specific situations. Which is why everyone should have one, at least, in their arsenal. Uh, save state also implies that you can go back to it if you fuck up. Right, yeah. So, I do think that... I do, I do think that looking at the, uh, uh, the... The way that phones work, and, you know, a lot of... Xbox needs to cater... Microsoft or Xbox needs to cater to kids. They need to get them off phones and into their... Uh, you know, in, in, into an actual console. Um, God, I remember having this conversation like five years ago because Declan was like super into playing, just you know, playing games on the phone. And I was just like, this kid is never going to play like an actual game. Like he's never going to play a PC game. He's never going to play, you know, a, 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 um, a console game. And I was wrong about that. He is playing console games, but, um, but still though, he is, he's more inclined to play shit on a touchscreen. So, Whatever the experience is for kids that are growing up with touch screens, which is being able to instantly resume multiple applications and, and very easily swap between them if needed to. Um, these are the type of features that need to be available in consoles 
in order for them to be appealing to a kid. The same way that when we look at, I mean, just in terms of like the evolution of games, in terms of like just typical game features, um, the same way that save states work, right? Like different ways of saving. Before you'd have to like complete a level, then there's like checkpoints, and then there was like instant save. Uh, all these things matter, right? Because we got to the point now where if a game doesn't have the ability to instantly save your current position, like a quick save, uh, then it's kind of laughed at. Kind of like Boneworks. Boneworks, they're they're struggling right now because they say in January is gonna be the earliest to be able to get out this uh, this save system that they've developed. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be it's just gonna be January, so <laughs> everyone's gonna be either done with the game or you know whatever. Um, kids can't just work and save up your lawnmower money and buy games now. Uh, One hundred and twelve dollars for a Steam controller? Shit, did it really go up? Oh my god, I might sell it. Uh, <laughs> It's just too expensive to buy new consoles. Oh man, I would say the Xbox SX I think is probably not going to be as successful for the for the younger demographic because of you know, and when I say younger demographic, I mean by the time this thing comes out, it's like the kids that are like you know ten or eleven now. They're going to be like thirteen or fourteen. They're going to be the ones asking for these things, but they're these eleven year olds, ten year olds, they're playing phone games um, constantly. And so I feel like if Microsoft doesn't have a solution to allowing kids to play, you know, play Xbox games on their phones, the same way that Steam Link does with uh, being able to play any Steam game to your phone, uh, then I fear that that's, they're going to have a bit of a problem with this game long term. Now, it's got enough power in it, and it is basically a PC in a weird shoebox tower. Uh, so... It is entirely possible that they can just add this functionality in later. <clears throat> if you look at initial buy-in for consoles now, you're looking at around thousand dollars USD. Uh, kids cannot can't afford that. Almost middle class parents can't afford it. Wow, thousand dollars! What kind of console is this? What is it? What are, what are we missing here? Uh, just wait until they're on Black Friday three three years. Huh? Huh? huh, huh. PlayStation One was two ninety nine. Yeah, consoles have always been like three hundred bucks, give or take. Um, this is, uh, I mean. We we bought Declan a Switch, uh, classic. I think it was two hundred or something, two fifty or something like that. Um, I can't see it. I mean, I can't see us doing a thousand. I guess it depends on where you live. Uh, so let's move on. What time is it? Let's move on. <laughs> oh wait, just last note on the Xbox One X. Or sorry, the Xbox Series X, see, uh, is that they're going to have more at E3 2020. And they actually say they have a lot of shit to show us at E3 2020. So we'll probably watch that. We're going to watch that. Uh, sorry, next year. Sometime next year. Speaking of Microsoft. And somebody said earlier, Microsoft's uh, scout team. This is just just kind of happened to fit here. Uh, Microsoft cancels streamers partnership after sex offender tweets. Did you guys see this? This is, it's, it's such a throwaway, but I just wanted to mention it because <sighs> sometimes you just do some dumb shit and we really have to pay for it. Uh, this guy took a picture of himself. I guess he shaved his mustache or something like that. Put on his sunglasses and he's like, and he said, uh, here, I actually have the tweet right here. He said, come watch a registered sex offender play, play Fortnite with 10 year olds. <laughs> This is such a, it's, it's such a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's such a stupid thing. It's like something that maybe he would have joked about with like his buddy or something. He's all like, yeah, I could see it. I could see it. It's like, you put all this shit on and it's like, you look like a, you look like a, you look like a sex offender. He's like, yeah, I'm about to go play Fortnite. Ha 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 ha. I mean like, and even then it's super cringy, but to put it on the fucking internet where it's permanent, why you do this? Why you do this? So this guy ended up losing his. Uh, his partnership status with <laughs> with uh, uh, with Microsoft with Mixer, and uh, he came back out. He had he had an apology. It, it sucks too because his, his name actually has Mixer in it. Uh, <laughs> Mixer Harris a junior. He said, "I want to apologize for a reason." Tweet. I absolutely agree that it was inappropriate. I'm sorry to the people that I ups that it upset. I made it without thinking how I would read how would how it would read. I meant that as a joke, but I agree with the fact that it isn't something to be joked about. I'm sorry. I don't think this guy has kids. Uh, such a, yeah, such an idiot. Like, this is, the, this is the idiot of the month. And, you know, he's, he's so late. He's so late in the year. It's going to be fresh, man. We think about the idiots of the year. He might actually make the list. <laughs> oh, man. Just dumb. 
Speaking of potentially dumb. <laughs> just move on. Just move on. Just read the headline for a second. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. <clears throat> so, there has been worse film ideas. Rabbits are getting a film through Lionsgate. Lionsgate, they brought us uh, John Wick, The Expendables, uh, Saw, and uh, Tyler Perry's uh, A Medea Family Funeral. So, a bit of a range. A bit of a range. Uh, and Warcraft movie. Yes, that's right. Uh, the director is going to be Todd Strauss Schulson, who brought us a very Her Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. And I as I'm reading this, I'm like, oh my god, this is going to be a fucking tragedy. <laughs> like, it's going to be, it's going to be terrible. Um, but then I got to the screenplay writers. Like, I was looking for a redeeming, a redeeming, like, element here. Because, to me, the rabbits are pretty much just another version of Minions. I don't care who came first, right? All that matters is which one hit the movies first. And the Minions already hit it, and they, 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 the, the, I mean, nobody likes the Minions anymore, right? It's the biggest fucking joke. Don't, don't, don't. Minion memes are just, like, such boomer material, it's ridiculous. Um... And so the rabbits getting their own film just kind of feels like uh, it's going to be just kind of like another another minions. But the screenplay was written by uh, Matt Senreich, Tom Shepard, and Zeb Wells of Robot Chicken fame. So that gives me some hope because the Robot Chicken crew have had plenty of hits and they have plenty of reason to uh, for uh, to to th they're plenty deserving of our respect as com com comedic writers. So if if the writers, because because here's what happens. So right now they are still looking at the director in terms of like they're still talking. Right once the director gets picked up and everything is solidified, they're gonna look at the screenplay. The screenplay right now is basically just like a written pilot. Uh, it is entirely possible that they might get that in. They'll be like, hmm, you know what? We're making so many changes. We might as well just start from scratch and just build something new. And then those writers could be out. So just remember those names. Matt, Tom, Zeb. Okay, those are your robot chicken writers that are that worked on the screenplay. If they're in the, uh, if they're actually tasked for production, then this could actually be totally fine. Uh... This is not like, this is sort of like Internet Explorer levels of late to the party. Hope for some, you hope for some dick jokes? I think it's going to be a kid. It might be a kid's, kid friendly movie, dude. I don't know. My Little Pony Apocalypse Pony Punishment Right for Your Sins. Yep. So, yeah, they're getting a film, and uh, uh, there's no date because nothing has started. It's just talks. They're, well, they know it's going to happen. They've actually secured the rights for the film, right? Uh, they just still narrow down, still trying to narrow down who's going to actually make the film itself. Ah. <sighs> Kid friendly with the writers from Robot Chicken. <laughs> we could hope, we could hope that it is basically a Robot Chicken take on Rabbids, which would be hilarious. Um, but it is slated to be a, a live action mix. So kind of like the Pokemon movie, kind of like uh, 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 Sonic the Hedgehog. So it's supposed to be like that. So there's so many people scrabbling for the rights to make this movie. <laughs> Dude. Dude, there probably is. There's probably at least a few people out there, a few companies out there just trying to get their hands on some of these IPs in order to make uh, uh, make uh, movies out of them. I don't know about Rabbids specifically, but hey, go for go go Ubisoft. Get them. Uh, and speaking of movies, just to kind of throw one more thing out there. Uh, so John Wick 4 and the Matrix sequel, Matrix 4, uh, both have release dates. May 21st, 2021 for both of them. I know some of you guys knew that already, but yeah. So uh, on May 21st, 2021, plan on having a Keanu Day. Both. Both. Yes. May 21st, 2021 is officially Keanu Reeves Day. 
<laughs> I thought everybody knew about that. I'm glad that some, that some folks have it. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I can't wait. Uh, Bill and Ted 3 is supposed to release August, August 3rd, 21st, 2020. That's right. Yeah, Bill and Ted 3 is coming out next year. Oh, man. Keanu is going to have a great, great 18 months. Uh, but May 1st is my birthday. It's okay. It's it's just right after your birthday. It's going to be a good day. Cyberpunk is also near there. Man, Keanu Reeves is everywhere. I did see the Ghostbusters Af Afterlife trailer. I thought it looked pretty good. Pretty good. I don't think that they could ever go back to try to re 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 uh I guess rekindle that formula that they had with the initial group. They have to move on and try something else. Uh, let's see. Make it a Keanu week. Yeah, you know what? Just make it a Keanu week, please. Please. Next up, this is something that we all saw coming. This is something we all saw coming. So remember back in 2014 when uh when Facebook acquired Oculus for two billion dollars. And then later they ended up losing a shitload of money because of uh, NDAs and IP theft and all this stuff. So they had to like spend an additional like almost half a million dollars, half a billion dollars between everybody that was nailed for this. Uh, but for Facebook, that's kind of chump change, like whatever. Uh, but Facebook, we knew that with their purchase of Oculus, we would eventually see some Facebook influence. And initially the way it worked was... <laughs> You can, their Oculus Rift has its own network, right? Of friends, kind of like a Steam platform, right? They have their own like platform, games, friends, all that stuff. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could link your Facebook account, much in the same way that you could link your Facebook account to everything else that you do on the internet. Uh, you can do it. You could do the same thing with, uh, with your Oculus Rift, with your, with your VR headset. Okay, weird, sure. I don't really think about hooking my social media directly to my my VR headset sitting over there, but okay. Um, well, they've announced some changes. and <laughs> Blink twice, except terms and conditions, yeah. Uh, they have made some changes to their, uh, well, to the feature list. And they are going to be adding, or really removing, the ability to, to have any social features whatsoever. Unless you are logged into Facebook. So here's, here's how it reads. If you choose not to log into Facebook on Oculus, we won't share data with Facebook to allow third parties to target advertisements to you based on your use of Oculus platform. Which sounds like, personally, I do like targeted ads, but I don't really see them having a place in VR. Yet, I could see in the future, maybe we're in there and you're walking around a virtual space, you get targeted ads. I think it's scummy to like muck up a budding games, uh, a budding arm of the games industry, which is virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, muck it up with, you know, ads and, and all that shit. It's like pop, I'm gonna have pop ups like right in the middle of, of like, <laughs> obviously not pop ups specifically, but. Still, like, your VR escape should be a VR escape. Uh, Facebook and Oculus will use information about your account and your use of Oculus to provide and improve social features. But what they said was that they weren't going to include 3D maps of your surroundings. So at least you have that going for you. Um, no Oculus porn. Yeah, no Oculus porn. You don't want a Facebook account, so my mind isn't made up. I'm first, first headset. Yeah. So here's, here's what's interesting uh, is that you can't, going forward, you cannot use the uh, any social features on the Oculus Rift unless you are logged into Facebook. Here they say, we're now using Facebook to power new social features on Oculus. By staying logged into Facebook on Oculus, you get blank, 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 blank. They point out everything that you get. What they, don't, what they don't say is that by not using Facebook, you lose, act you can't even add friends anymore. You can't add friends. <laughs> You've basically been exiled. To uh, uh, to your own little lonely island of uh, of fuck that. No, you're just gonna play. You're just gonna play Steam games on your Oculus Rift. Just don't fucking log in and just play Steam games on your Oculus Rift because it's totally compatible with uh, Steam's VR platform. So you don't have to worry about Oculus and their bullshit. Um, but 
I mean, yeah, it, there, there are benefits of going with an Oculus headset because of the way that they, that their tech functions versus like the Vive, uh, 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 technology. Um, but it might not be worth it for some folks. Uh, so they're forcing users to go through service that has repeatedly been leaking, uh, both accidentally and intentionally, uh, intentionally user information over the years, multiple times. Yes. Yep. Yep. We knew it was going to happen. We knew that they were going to put in uh, their own features. I guess what it was so jarring is that they they're just removing existing features in place of it. It's it's really scummy, like really is scummy. And again, we knew that it was going to happen, but I guess I didn't anticipate it happening like this. You think it's going to effectively kill the Oculus? Yeah, I think that I, th I think it's going to go. I think the Oculus Rift is going to not be marketed so much to enthusiasts. Uh, they're going to base probably just drop enthusiasts like gaming enthusiasts like us. Uh, and they're going to be targeting like our parents. You, what was that? Remember those commercials for that like Facebook moving LCD screen that did like FaceTime kind of stuff where you could like video teleconference like, your, uh, your, your family and whatnot. Remember those ads were everywhere, like around Super Bowl and the holidays last year. It was fucking everywhere. It's like $300 for this fucking moving monitor. Um, I think those are the people that they're going to be marketing the uh, Oculus uh, stuff to. Yeah, so you can have Grandpa in VR. Yeah, all their competitors have to do is say, we have VR, but we don't have to make... Yeah, exactly. So that's the thing. We're aware of that stuff, but Grandpa's not. Grandpa might be like, whoa, this is so cool. Uh, your auntie might not. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's plenty of folks who are still removed from, uh, you know, f from this type of news that they're not going to recognize that, you know, they this particular VR platform is going to be just like using Facebook, essentially. Google Google and support for Glass Explorer Edition. Aw. Well, we won't mention that, but we'll just go ahead and give that a nod for that link. <laughs> Google Glass. There are so many, there's so many like fake Google Glass things out there. Now, I don't know how Google Glass. I actually remember I, I did see a guy who actually had a functioning, like a like a real Google Glass first edition, or whatever you call it. Uh we were at a party once and you could tell there was something. He had something on his head. Uh for sure. Uh, and it was strange. And he said, he said that there was one situation where he's at a bar and somebody made a comment about him recording other people. And he said it kind of made him feel uncomfortable because the person was not saying it in kind of a joking way. He was saying it kind of like, how are you recording right now? Like that. And, and so, and that was the biggest problem that I think a lot of people had was that they felt like they were being recorded all the time because these things are up, which is super fucking dumb because everyone's got their fucking cell phones out and everyone's always recording something. So yes. Yes, they're probably recording. Uh, what is the appeal of having Facebook attached to your VR? Like, discover that, <laughs> that your uncle is a serious racist in VR. Yeah. Oh, man. Just ima imagine all of the fake-ass news that you could just ex put yourself through in virtual reality. Oh, my God. Uh, the Snapchat glasses sell like hot hotcakes. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, they didn't really sell like hotcakes, but I do have a set. And I did like them a lot. I really did like them. 1080p, uh, well, ish. Um, pretty good. And if they're not recording, they'll tell everyone. They'll still, <laughs> they're still there. Google Glass. Yeah, it was a, uh, it's funny, Google Glass. It was one of those things that like that whoever owns it had to tell you about it. It's ridiculous. Uh, moving on. This is actually towards the end of the show. It's perfect. Perfect timing. Oh, my God. Uh, so. Out of Worlds. I said we'd mention this. We talked about this later, right? Yeah. Out of Worlds had a very, very interesting bug that they had to go and, uh, and troubleshoot. Now, I know that we all know that developers don't really put a, 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 the same amount of time as they used to put. And I say used to like maybe 20 years ago now um, into Q&A. And so there's. Games have also got a lot more complex over time. There's a lot more moving parts. Uh, there's a lot more functions that could go wrong. There's just a lot of shit that could happen. And so when you are, when you put out a game and it sells millions of copies and you start getting weird reports about things that are happening in the game that are really fucking specific, like really fucking specific, and you just cannot replicate it, it's going to drive you nuts. And so this is actually, so this is actually just a story based off of a huge Twitter thread. And I'll try to summarize it for you guys because 
it is pretty hilarious. <laughs> so what was happening was in in single player, uh, and the whole game is single player. Uh, so the Outer Worlds, for those of you guys who don't know, it's kind of like Mass Effect, right? Single player, RPG, companions, all that good stuff. Qu quest, quests and side missions and all that shit, okay? Uh, your companions have their own side missions. Now, if your companion dies, then you lose, like, you, you basically, uh, cannot complete that side mission. It actually fails that side mission. Uh, and so, but the thing is, your companions can only die, like permanently die, in the hardest difficulty mode, supernova mode. That's the only way that you're, and they will fucking die. Oh my god, they will go out of their way to die. The best thing you could do is just putting behind a fucking rock and then go ahead and then just kill everything and then summon them because they will die. Uh, and then you will lose those quests. So, a bug came back and it said, yeah, it says like, my companions are alive. I just can't do these quests because it says that they're dead. Um, and we compare, it's basically following new faith. I mean, we could argue about like the semantics of like who is what, but I think that for the average person, I think I'm good. Uh, so the uh, Obsidian QA lead, Taylor Swope, he got, basically went in and he said he tried all these things to try to figure out what the fuck was going on. And then he came across a tweet from somebody who said, uh, who said that they were experiencing an issue where a companion will just continue doing whatever it is that they're doing when you enter into a dialogue with another companion. So if you're talking to somebody and somebody else is doing something, then they will continue to do that thing. And it creates a really odd kind of backdrop. It was just kind of like, oh, this is kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird thing thing for them to do but whatever you know weird bugs exist in games and so it says so if someone started climbing a ladder and the player entered whoops okay <laughs> and the player entered uh the conversation before they stopped they wouldn't be able to exit the ladder something on your mind So apparently, uh, this, this is the bug, is that if somebody, if a companion gets to a ladder and starts to climb the ladder and then you start a dialogue, you will, uh, <laughs> quest failed right there. Don't bite the sun. You will fail that quest. <laughs> and it's it's gotta be just just the most like how do you even you, you you just get lucky that you actually stumbled across this like you you the fact that taylor figured this out i mean that's a huge thing this is such a huge bug and this and this it's, it's such it's such a, it's a specific bug and so if you want to go back and read the, the, the write up here, it's just so funny. He even says it's perplexing because companions can't die. And he says he got two cases of it and he couldn't figure it out. And, and there it was just fucking just, just right, right off into space, right behind the character. And that was pretty much it. So man, uh, yeah, it's from the developer. This is from the developer. This Taylor, Taylor Swope is the, uh, uh QA for a QA lead for Obsidian working on our worlds. So, yep. Yeah, he says uh, he only figured it out because a player report mentioned something specific. Yes, yes, the specific thing that he mentioned was uh, was that I think I had it, I had it here somewhere, but um, that when player when companions are doing something in the background, they'll continue to do it, and that was a weird thing. And so he was able to figure out that there was a ladder, I guess, um, which is why <laughs> yeah, detailed be detailed in bug reports. Go to show player reports are useful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In this one, the the tweet, which is not actually in this this thread, uh, it must have been in another thread somewhere. But the actual tweet that he mentions, where he says that somebody mentioned it to him, was just like it was just a random tweet. It was just kind of like, ha ha, this thing happened. And it's crazy, and that was it. 
This is the post child for being detailed with bugs. Plus, what were you what you were doing when it happened? Yeah, this it's such a good write up. And for any of you guys who've worked in in development, uh, where you've had to like chase down bugs, uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys could appreciate this quite a bit. Um, that's it, guys. I will say, I, I just pers personal like just some shit that I, that I did this week or whatever. Uh, I played Dark Siders two last night. Now, I I it, it's it's it kind of plays like Diablo if you would play that or like any other like ARPG top down. Um, it was a lot of fun, but I don't want to talk about the game. I want to talk about the fact that I played the game and I didn't have to own it. Uh, have you guys used the Steam uh, uh, couch co-op feature yet? We had talked about using it for uh, what's it called for uh, uh, for Subnight for certain games that don't support online co-op. But this game, I believe I believe this game does support co-op like online co-op but you'd have to own the game if you if you do online co-op so i didn't feel like buying the game it's only 30 bucks but i didn't feel like buying the game so my friend was like hey i'll just i'll just send you we'll just try out the steam couch co-op thing and we did and we played split screen and it worked yeah it worked really well i did not i did not expect it to work this well which is silly because i've used steam link for so long and it's worked so well for so many years i guess it should just make sense that it does but I really didn't think that outside of the network, like outside of my local network, that I would get such good response for everything that I was doing. Um, we had plans for friends to play Divinity 2. Yeah, I mean, just think about any... How local is your friend? Connection fairly local? He is in LA. I am in San Francisco. So 400 miles, something like that. Uh, I haven't played with anybody. I mean, that's my first time playing. But I, I, just want, I just wanted to bring it up because I was so amazed by how well it worked. And so was he. We were both... We were both talking through Steam, <laughs> through Steam's voice service, which I've never used either. <laughs> and uh, and we were just like, this is like really working well, because because then we switched and we played uh, we played Grip, which is a racing game, a uh, very fast paced action racing game. And uh, and it also worked very well there. So, yeah, Steam voice. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. So yeah, any game, any game that does not have online co-op or it doesn't have to not, and this is the biggest thing. It doesn't have to have, it doesn't have to not have online, online co-op. If you just want to play with somebody who doesn't own the game and you want them to be like your second player or whatever, that's when you use this. Think of any game that supports two player. It doesn't have to be online. If it does, great, but you're not using that because they might not own the game. Uh, they might not own the game. This is where that would come in handy. So yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty impressed. I'm very impressed with the performance of uh, of Couch Co-op from Steam. And I'm glad I got a chance to uh, to test it out with them. And it was it was actually it was, you know it's funny. It was also really weird and surreal because he uh, it was a little pop up you know in our in our chat window. It just popped up and it said click here to join join the game with friend. And so I clicked on it and it just. It just popped up a window. There was no like, you know, you're used to when you play on your PC, you have a certain standard that you've like been groomed to accept. And that is I launched the game. It's going to fucking do the, the C plus whatever bullshit that installs every other time you play the game. Uh, and then it launches the game. It plays the logos, does all that stuff. No, I didn't do, didn't do any of that stuff. It just a window popped up. It took over my screen and it was boom. That was that was in. That was absolutely it. Uh, I did. Ha I did have one instance. Yeah, I got one instance where I had a lag spike, um, but we just restarted it and it worked fine. So. Uh, but yeah, so it's not perfect, but for what it is, fucking works great. Pretty fucking great. But yeah, he was, uh, he was broadcasting me. He has a, he has a ultra wide just like I do. And so what I, what I did was I just moved it over here and it was great. Cause I could play on the ultra wide and you also get more real estate cause you play split screen as a vertical split screen. Um, and so we also, we were able to both play and I had like a nice little square, <laughs> just a little square. I was like playing like an Instagram video, uh, of it. It's perfect. <clears throat> Steam's free version of Steam. Oh yeah. Like, but like Steam link has always existed. Uh, they've just, uh, they've been improving it over time. And you know, now like Steam link will work on your phone, off your network. You don't have to be local anymore. And that worked really well. I was really surprised how well that worked, even considering where I live, I don't have great signal. So I tried it and it still worked pretty good. Um, and so, yeah, no, it's just, uh, I mean, I'm just, I, I understand there's plenty of like the Stadia, there used to be online. live. There's like, there's X cloud that's coming out. There's lots of, uh, video game, video streaming services, which I think we'll call them that, you know, work well, 
but I want to be able to access my own. I have I have a thousand fucking games. I want to be able to just play my own games. And Steam Link is really what's uh, I mean, it's delivering. One thing that I did not test and I want to test with him is can I Steam Link down to my Apple TV and play downstairs with his feed? That's that's something I want to test. I don't know how we would do that because the UI wouldn't support it necessarily. You might have to rig it. But if I can sit downstairs on the couch and play actual couch co-op with a friend of mine uh, on Steam, I think that'd be pretty amazing. So what is cloud gaming? What is this? 4chan. Uh, I felt like Steam could make a push and absorb Twitch's functionality and create a super platform. Imagine being able to watch a streamer have a button right below that lets you buy slash download instantly play with that person. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in some cases, that sounds great. <laughs> they, you know, Steam, uh, Twitch already has the some basic functionality there where they, they allow you to buy the game you know, below uh, and the stream will get a cut. I don't know where they put that cut, but apparently it, it'll happen. Um... But Steam already has the infrastructure, you know, for the game support itself internally, and it's already such a widely used platform. They could do it. They could. Has way too much on his mind. Don't give, don't give him ideas. To avoid confusion, the Steam link is the hardware they release. The software is called Steam Remote Play. Previously called... In- Wait. The... you saying the... The software feature is called... Hold on. I don't, is that true? Is that true? Because... I swear it says Steam Link in my phone. Hold on. Let me see. Steam. Yeah, it's called Steam Link. Yeah, it's Steam Link on the phone. Um, but yeah, this there is Steam Link hardware. There's Steam Link hardware, but uh, yeah, the app, the app is still called Steam Link because it links to your Steam. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it for the news. That's it for the news. This is the, uh, I, I think we have like one more episode, maybe two more episodes for the end of the year. Um. So yeah, technology. That's right, technology. Guys, thank you so much for helping with the news today. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. I can't. It's kind of an awkward way to do this. And uh, yes, right. Remote play is Sony's thing. That's right. I do have that too. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that's the news. My name is Mike B. AK Phony. Twitch.tv slash AK Mike B. AK Mike B on all the things. AK Mike B Photo for other things. We'll see nudes. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy your Christmas. And don't forget your deodorant. That's right. <laughs> if you button up the top, make sure to wear a tie. Yes, that's that. I believe that's probably the rule. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Unbutton just the middle button. Just right here. Just like the middle button. Just let some skin show. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, that's what the ladies like, huh? They just wanna, just wanna, I just want to sit here like this. Just to let them know. Just to let them know. 